Ridge Toastmasters six years ago in June of 2014. He has served as the club's Sergeant of Arms, VP of Membership, and VP of Education. Rick's goals for joining Toastmaster is to become a more confident speaker and overcome his fear of public speaking so that he, became, he can become a motivational speaker. Ultimately, he wants to ensure that he's able to provide for his audience through his YouTube channel, which is called Advice for Mr. Rick. He also has a goal to work his way up to achieving the distinguished Toastmaster title. Rick has completed, excuse me, Rick has completed the Competent Communicator Manual and his Competent Leadership Manual, but has now chosen to follow the Pathways curriculum. The track Rick has chosen is the Presentation Mastery. The Presentation Mastery Path is designed to help Rick build his skills as an accomplished speaker. The projects on this path focus on learning how an audience responds to Rick and improving Rick's connection with audience members. The project contributes to developing an understanding of effective public speaking techniques, including speech writing and speech delivery. His speech today will be from Pathways Project Number Six, which is about effective body language. This is a five to seven minute speech. The purpose of this project is to deliver a speech with awareness of your intentional and unintentional body language, as well as to learn, practice, and refine how you use nonverbal communication while delivering a speech. Rick Richards, courage is a choice. Courage is a choice. Rick Richards. Thank you, Ryan, for that great introduction. I love my grandma. This weekend, we are celebrating her 104th birthday. Amazing. But in actuality, it's not that big of a deal because she died 18 years ago. Okay, enough about grandmas. What I really want to talk about today is fear and overcoming that fear and letting that fear dissipate right in front of you. Raise up your thumb if you've ever had fear in your life and you've let fear keep you from some of your dreams. Okay, I see a lot of thumbs up. Okay, well, I want to, this is a great day for you because I am going to give you a message that's going to help you break through fear for the rest of your life. You never let, have to let that false evidence appearing real destroy you any longer and keep you from your dreams and your goals. The first stage of that, there's four different stages. One, you have to identify what that fear is. The best thing to do is write that down and find out what that fear is. Sometimes you have to do a little soul searching to find out what that fear is. Sometimes you have to dig really deep to find what is the fear in my life that's keeping me back from reaching my dreams and my goals and who I really want to become. The second thing is you have to make a commitment to yourself that you're no longer going to let that dream destroy you or keep you from your goals and your dreams. The third thing is a special word. This is a word that Aristotle said is the most important quality of mankind. Also, it's, if you look back in medieval times, this is one of the four cardinal virtues. And that word is courage. Courage. Courage is a choice. Courage is not something that's automatic. And once you have courage and you let that courage and you act on that courage, that courage you can push through that fear and you'll start to see that fear start to dissolve. On the other side of courage is confidence. All of us here at Toastmasters, we have an opportunity to face fears in our lives. A lot of us may have started Toastmasters and had a fear of public speaking. And what's happening is as we continue to show up, as we continue to have a vision, say, I'm not going to let that fear control me. I'm going to overcome that fear, and I'm going to become a better speaker day after day, week after week, month after month. And as we do that, that fear starts to subside. It starts to fall apart until we get to the point of being confident speakers. One, one story I want to share with you is I was 28 years old living in Santa Cruz, California. My life was at the at a, at a dead end. I had a dream by the time I was 28, I expected to be, have my education done. I expected to be married. I expected to have kids. I had to be, I expected to be on my way on my career. But what I had found myself, 28 years old, my fiance had just broken up with me. I was in between jobs. I was a construction worker. I, I framed houses. I was in between jobs. So I was, didn't have any work at the time. 
I didn't have a bachelor's degree. And I thought by now, I thought I have all these things accomplished. I felt like a failure at the end of my, my life. And not the end of my life, but the end, I was not where I wanted to be. And so I was sitting on my couch in my rented house and it was getting dark and I started to pray. And I said, God, you got to help me here. I've done everything I thought I knew what to do and I didn't know what to do. So I, I was praying to him and I believe that he said this, Rick, I want you to go back to school and I want you to finish, even if it kills you. And at that point, I had already accomplished a two-year degree from a junior college. I had an AS degree from a, a school in Southern California called College of the Canyons in Valencia, but I didn't have my bachelor's degree. And I was afraid to go back to school because I was 28 years old. I felt like I'd be foolish to go back to school. I'm too old. All the people going to school now are in their 18, 19, 20 years old. I'm 10 years older than all these people. But I felt like God said, go back to school and finish even if it kills you. So I picked up the phone. I called down to Southern California. I acquired a job. I went back to college. And today I have a, I, I got, I earned my bachelor's degree in pastoral ministry and theology from a, a Bible college called College of the Canyons. I'm not, not, it's called College, what's it called? It's called Life Pacific University now. It used to be called Life Bible College. But I did accomplish that, that dream and that goal. I was afraid of accomplishing that, that dream of mine of getting a bachelor's degree, but I didn't let it control me. Now, one of the things, if you take an acorn and you plant that in the ground, what happens automatically? That acorn grows into a beautiful tree, an oak tree. A lion cub, when it's born, is a, is a little, little cub, but automatically it grows into a lion. But that's what mother nature does. A lot of things are automatic. But one thing that we have to recognize as men and women, as human beings, things are not automatic in our life. We have to be intentional about what we do with our life and how we lead our life. And so in order for us to attack fear, we have to be intentional about attacking that fear and recognizing fear as an enemy. And we have to act on breaking through that fear in the way that we break, when we, when we choose to be courageous, when we choose to have courage in our life, that's when that fear starts to dissipate. One of the things that helps you build courage is to recognize that we, have, we all have big egos. We want everyone to like us. We want everyone to think, hey, they got it together. They've got their act together. But the, the most important trait of developing courage is be willing to be foolish. Be willing to look bad in front of other people. Be willing to make failure your friend and choose to get out there and make mistakes in front of people. And when you do that, what happens is you start to build and strengthen yourself as you attack this ego of ours that always wants us to give the appearance that we're perfect and we got it all together. But in order to grow ourselves, we have to be throw ourselves out there and, and let ourselves grow. And the only way you grow is by failing, making mistakes and failures along the way. Another aspect of growing in this and attacking this fear and causing this fear to dissipate is to envision yourself overcoming this fear and not letting this fear destroy you and then to take action and when you attack your fear the fear just dissolves in front of you so my main my main thing i want to share with you today were these four points first of all we have to identify the fear then we have to make a commitment that we're not going to let that fear control us any longer and then we have to embrace courage, and that's a choice that you make. I'm choosing to be courageous and push through this, and I'm going to act on it. Take action to destroy that fear and go after that fear. And on the other side of that is you develop confidence, and that fear no longer controls you. Thank you for your attention today. I give it back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. myself. I forgot that I had to come off of you. Great job, Rick. Thanks for sharing.